darkness, my old friend. Man, 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 dude, dude. Do you know where I can get some sweet, sweet dialogos? <laughs> you got an echo, 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 echo. I do, 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 do. Are you sure I have an echo? An echo? I'm, I'm an echo? Somebody, oh, I do. I do, I do, I do. I was watching the stream. Well, not really, it was on. You got six people watching you breathe, bro. It's amazing. <laughs> Seven. Well, I'm here now. I, the numbers should skyrocket immediately. You're an important guy. I faced the seal binder today, bro. Seems as if some people want that quick pill method. Oh, I don't have to put in any work. Oh, I don't have to try that hard. Oh, a quick fix, you know. But that's kind of the thing about life. Nothing good comes easy, and consistency, hard work, and discipline seem to be the only methods that really are going to make a big difference. If it comes out, that podcast is going to tear this corner apart. What's the seal binder? I know, right? You know how the, the Book of Revelations got that bound in the forehead and we talked about you think it's a stupid little hat? The phylactery? The, the seal, the bound, the forehead. I faced the seal binder today. I'm on, we, I recorded with, for his part podcast. If you had watched my live stream replay, you would know these things. I was busy today. I, I, I streamed most of today. Because mm -hmm. I haven't streamed in a while, so you think you gotta keep your those hours up. I do. Like there's Why people do I have, <laughs> there's people who have hit a thousand who haven't uh, who haven't had the hours, the watch hours. So those six people were feeding you watch hours right now. It's beautiful. Oh, I, so ever since Father Stephen came the first time on here, like. I was close to 4,000 watch hours. Now I have something like 12,000 or something. It's it's ridiculous. I hope you get somebody that loves it enough to go through and like pull out all my appearances and do collages of what's been going on over here because cause I don't, I can't. My attention span is I have almost 12,000 watch hours in the past year. That's what she said. Man, should I start an OnlyFans? Really? I mean, can you do a poll on StreamYard? Is that a thing? Uh, you can do it on, uh, you can do it on, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, where's, how do I make a poll? I can make a poll on here. Engage, start a poll. What, on what, <laughs> on what can you do that? Grim, um, on YouTube. Start and only fans. Ta da! Let's there is find now out. a poll. That requires way too much commitment from like the four people watching you breathe, I think. Oh, Weeks is here. We'll be alright. You get no savings throws on Federici's channel. You get the disclaimer he's Jewish. <laughs> Come on! Well, Gavin has gone off the rails. He has? Why? Why? Because he's trying to be a cult leader, and he was never even a good cult follower. I mean, he was Since the best I had as a cult follower, but now he's trying to start his own thing. Like, World of You 42. Like, uh, tapping into hitchhikers like a noob. Come on. Bring your towel, boys. I have boys. no idea what you're talking about. That's because you don't pay attention to anybody in the corner but yourself. That's what I do. No, I watch people. I see. I look around. I see what's going on. I go talk. You are to much more binders. attentive than I am. Okay. So um, I'm ready to have Teal on my podcast to show. Hook it up. Peter Teal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's never gonna happen. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. Good luck. Matt Gavin is the Matthew McConaughey of TLC. All right, all right. You got more right. admin slots, bro? Like, I want to be able to highlight the chat. 
when I'm here. I do not. But I can do it for you. It's not the same. I shouldn't have to tell you. I gave you an admin slot. You gave it up. I, I re disassociated with the Jacob's Ladder Network. Like, you did. The Virtually Not Alone Network is a competing non-Jewish run media platform. As far as I well, know. Well, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. In the not too distant future. <clears throat> my foundation is going to actually launch and then we will have an actual structure for this little corner yeah i, I heard subscribe. i gotta get married to run things so to be on the board of directors yes so so i have some know jewish questions i was, I was gonna Monk? say for kezi but kezi but man something terrible happened what happened Nakama convinced me that she is like, she's like such a good Israeli agent. She's convinced me she's not at all, like even an Israeli. So I like I was going to tag team them both with all my Semite stuff. And now, it's... well, I mean, she's not, is she an Israeli? She lives in Israel. The way I judge things, she's a New Yorker, so. We're, she is a New Yorker. Now it's now it's like, a, oh, what am I gonna do with all this? This video could have been Gavin. I don't, man. Weeks, if you want to run clips, you gotta leave them in the thing. And I'm I'm coming back to work after after a long hiatus of fishing, a long fishing vacation. You went fishing? No, I don't go anywhere. But I've been fishing for quite some time. It's a, it's like slot machines. It's nature's slot machine. Hey, Gav. Uh, I am trying to I see what... Matthew McConaughey, it. selfish, selfless, vice versa. Might not be able to do McConaughey, man. Live streams will get shut down if you run copyright stuff for more than 12 seconds or so. Especially well, songs. The song bots are terrible. Yeah, I've noticed. I don't know how you play as many songs as you do. <clears throat> I get the I get permission from the people that like it's Pet Cow usually, mm. or uh, the Arcus Sounds guy. I guess Alphabet knows them. You got permission. From oh them. yeah, tomorrow I'm supposed to be on um, on what's her name? That woman. You're recording a line her by channel. line. On yeah. The Nodrick channel. What song? Correct. Faryad. Oh. <laughs> that sounds a lot like like the a soft G, sir. Faryad? Mm. You're fine. You're fine. It's a short it's a short. Vaporware is anti capitalist, will not incur strikes. I don't know. I have the, no idea what vaporware is. I don't know, but if you vape, you should know that propylene glycol has been approved as safe for to be edible by the FDA. Edible and in your lungs is probably not the same thing, but it, it yeah, it's just propylene glycol, guys. So watch for that seal binder podcast, man. If it comes out, whoo, I'm ripping scabs off of wounds all over the place. It's it's giant. It's controversial. It's well. Twelve well, hours ago, saying. you you <laughs> streamed. Now is all there ever is. And yeah, it was nine minutes link. and forty seconds long. There's a link to that kid's show in the description. Harley Seal Binder. I told you Seal Binder, didn't I? Didn't I? He has two hundred and forty-five subscribers. Yeah, but. He's got an agency. He does this, he does this Riverside FM thing that's kind of like Streamyards. It's interesting. It's interesting. Inspiring you to become the best version of yourself with every episode. With every episode, especially the one I was on. <laughs> Holy smoke, boy, howdy! You should. You need to be inspired to be the best version of yourself, Jacob. Why aren't? Why isn't the corner not enough to do that for you? Hey, I started 
uh, a master's degree program. Of puppets? No, social work. Oh, I thought, okay. You're going to get your hands dirty, huh? Go down and in Ezra the Klein the and Dan Savage. Two of the ho most horrible human beings on earth. What about them? I don't know. CW seems to think they're Jewish. Uh, what do I? I haven't. I think it's ninety minutes, and I haven't watched it yet. You want to watch After Socrates together, Federici? I watched the first one. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to watch the rest of it. He assumes you've already watched fifty hours of <laughs> Awakening from the Meaning Crisis. Yes, no, it is Garth, all right um, if you pop you on guard. You ask permission like a little cuck man. You're not allowed now. <laughs> come on, come on. Right. I mean, you've got the, it's, the door is open. It's at the top of the links. I like Garth. I'm sure I will, too. You've never met Garth. I know, but I'm sure I like him. I went and had a uh, beer with him at a beer brewery. Alcohol is a consumptive spirit. Garth! There he oh. is, ladies. Oh. That looks like a radio station. Look at that beard. It's a power beard. Man, okay. It is a power beard. So, thank you, Grim. Oh, uh, Grim, by the way, so cool story for you. Whenever I hear your name Grim, um, I think of Grim Natwick. No, if he wants some, I'll get him some. Okay. I'm looking. Okay. Anyway, we can stop tape anytime. How have you been enjoying your stay in Toronto? Well, I, I've been surprised, I guess, by the many things that have happened in a few days, and uh, very happily surprised. I, I've heard and seen some of the nice things about the town. The town is really a city. Yeah. As Ray Brad, Bradbury referred to it as the most perfect city in the Western continent. And uh, I think his opinion serves my own very well. I'm proud that, uh, that, you, that you like it. You said you were originally an illustrator rather than a cartoonist. I, I should have, if I said that, I should correct it, I hoped to become a real good American illustration when I was in my teens and early 20s was one of the great arts in America. We had uh, Saturday Evening Post and Collier's and a few large, very important magazines who featured excellent illustrators by some of the best artists in America. And in my youth, I hoped I would be one of those. And to become one, I, I had a rather a painstaking education. Yeah. I studied in Chicago at the Art Institute. I studied in New York. And then, after I had earned a little money for myself doing more or less popular art, I saved enough to go to Vienna for three years. So I was reasonably well educated as an artist. But during this transition, about the time that I returned to America, television, radio first, and uh, several years later, television changed the aspect of the American public toward the magazines. And several of the real great ones simply folded up, went out of business in the illustration field deteriorated. Well, luckily I had gotten into animation when I was quite young and it began to develop. So out of the collapse of the one thing I had hoped to do, there was a sort of a rebirth in the growth of something that I found equally interesting. And uh, that was the animated cartoon. That um, yes. Does, does that, does it ring a bell at all? If no. not, I, I don't expect it to. So who, so who the hell is Grim Natwick? So Grim Correct. Natwick um, is one of the people who animated Snow White and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs all the way back then. And like he's he, the one that did her? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because Grim Natwick's specialty in animating 
was that he was really good at animating women. Because in like er I see the connection immediately. <laughs> but uh um because like in early animation, right? It's like they it was a lot of like animals, right? Because like animating animals is like they just kind of had these like round bodies with like round heads with like flailing arms and so they were made up of like simple shapes which made them really easy to animate you know uh whereas like if you get to like the whole like human figure right like a anatomically correct human back then it was because animation was like really really early budding industry uh so was he your people. grandfather no, he is a distant relative. I don't know how he's related. I like the way I... he says his name. Grim. He went, but but he went to that school, which is the epicenter of all evil, where he uh, was class president. The Art Institute of Chicago. No, University of Wisconsin Madison. Wait, where is this? This is a... why. Why is the epicenter of all evil a place I've never he was, heard? Of? Uh, but it does high... look very, very Oculist. Have you heard of the Oculus? The Oculus Rift? No, no, the Oculus. The Oculus? No. Yeah, I it's haven't. a great, it's a great truth stream. Oh, okay. Mildred Natwick. Now that's yep. somebody I recognize. Yep, that's another one. Yeah. All these Natwicks. If I you, in case you didn't it. know, Garth's last name is actually Natwick. Yeah, wow. which is which is fine. It's not like it's not the first time I put my name out in the internet. So also, That's... hello CW. I see I see you in the chat. Hope you're doing well. I hear you're a Minnesotan because of him. Uh, well, not because of him. Um, I am Minnesotan. Uh, for right. most reasons that people are Minnesota, um, is because you know I just was grown up and raised here, um, and I can tolerate the cold because anyone who can't tolerate the cold just decides to leave Minnesota. So it's, it's he's also own. a Lutheran. God have mercy on his soul. Well, at, at this point, I'm I grew up in the Lutheran Church. At the very most, I was also a uh, Lutheran camp counselor. So I have indoctrinated little kids into the Lutheran Church. Uh, but um, uh, at this point, I would mostly just I don't know. At this point, I'm just Christian. I can't confidently say I'm a Lutheran at this point, although I'm, it's definitely not out of the question. Also, what, what does the word Christian mean? Um, to the, the best word of my, itself, yeah. Someone who simply wants to try and follow Christ. F emphasis on try. Okay, okay, because for me the word means Christ-like, and anybody who says it is already failing hard. Because yeah, he never, I, he never, he never identified as a Christian. So if anyone, you want to be like him, you probably shouldn't. Anyone, like, basically, it's like, if you decide It's a to, political, it's a political line. It's like... Yeah. Identity yeah, is. politics is the only reason you say, I'm a Christian. It's because you're part of playing Jesus identity Jesus was politics. a Jew. Nah, Jesus was the son of a man. <laughs> See, no, he, he, well, he was just a Jew. Was. Just. CW, you, just you don't even believe that. I'll what is that first that. twig of the brain? Okay, I don't know if you guys know anything about this channel, Federici, but I've been on it on occasion. And the last time I was seriously on it, he pulls this almond tree in afterward and spews the most heinous stuff about Jesus anybody has ever said. And he puts it on the back of the episode I'm on. It's oh, oh, whoops. I, I'm sorry. I posted a comment and it posted it under you. Okay, this is my first time using it. I've never used this before. That's exactly why he wants it like that. He's like, look, they're talking as me. They're wait, under me. Does this, I, wait, I can impersonate Jacob in the YouTube chat now. Oh, this is amazing. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but I'll... Uh... I'm going to see if I can actually sabotage this channel or if it's protected. <laughs> uh, uh, Garth, have you ever heard of the Protocols of Zion? Of the Elders of Zion. Oh, they're not that elder. <laughs> no, I am not. You've never heard of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion? It's complete conspiracy bullshit fabrication that weirdly describes exactly how the world currently operates after 200 years. Which version? 
The one I read didn't read. Okay, I, I got part, part 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 of the problem is the versions have changed a lot over the past two hundred years. So I, I've been thinking about it. I don't see any reason why I shouldn't teach Alan Moore's Kabbalah. Who's Alan Moore? Thing. He's pa Pajot's nemesis. He's Wait, I don't know who that the, uh, is. The author of uh, Watchmen, like that Alan yes. Moore. Yes. Yes. Okay. You, would you see this? I have this here. You see, uh, it's one of five. Hey, I'm showing this, Jacob. I have this. I'm, I, I'm looking at this guy's picture and thinking he's not a capitalist. And and like, okay, there's this. Let's see what this scene in here was. I don't. Where are they at? Hold on, hold on. They're upside down and stuff. Da -da 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 -da. Hmm. LSD was an incredible experience. <laughs> Not so was your mom. Been. Now, see oh, this. Show God. this. Show it, Jacob. I this, am showing it. This, this is Alan Moore's graphic novel representation of a like his fictional character going through each of the nodes on the Kabbalah. Is that a steam engine? But, um, yes, yes, Splendor, apparently, is that one involved, but I figure oh. I might as well, there's no reason not to go through this, I mean, sure, it's probably evil and demonic and stuff, but nobody believes in that, so let's walk through it together and see what happens. Yes, yes, let's go head over to Jeh, 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 Jevra, tell me about that one. Gevura? Yes, tell me about Gevura. Gevura usually gets translated <laughs> as severity. <clears throat> it is the left hand. And Good, now it get, is... it off, get me off of the center of the screen. You've taken what? the Kabbalah off of my face. Now, thank you, sir. Why is um, he Pajot's nemesis? Because I have a clip of Pajot saying it's, he's his nemesis. And he's spoken it into existence, and now it's true. And Pajot's making that God's Dog, or whatever, graphic novel. Well, he made it, didn't he? Like, it's, well, like you could go I, out and buy it. I don't know that it's all the way out. I think it is. It's I'm pretty sure. He's also started a new one that looks kind of serious, or co-created. He tweeted about it the other day. Looked like the real deal. He, he, he's not not playing in the Alan Moore nemesis thing. I should go get some tea. Okay. Okay. Uh, you guys yes. have fun. I'm on the website right now, and yep, I, I'm on the Symbolic World website, and yep, you can buy it right now for 30 US dollars. God's dog. Yeah, but it's not a one-issue thing, is it? I I don't think so. I think they're going to do more issues. Yeah, um, that's what I meant. It's not out-out. Like, this oh, Alan Moore okay. stick came out in 99. It's out-out. Okay. Well, well, ready to be dealt with. Um, this is new thing up there at all announced that he tweeted about. That Peugeot tweeted about. Yeah, this is some new graphic novel -y project. If you're on the Symbolic World site, it should be announced there, I would think. Okay, I'm not on Twitter at all, so I don't blame you. It's a hellhole. Uh, but it's fabulous. Yeah. I learn a lot there. There's great people we meet. It's, it's okay. good times. Some of my best thoughts ended up there. I've, I, I have, I have plans for them if I can rescue them. Okay. Why is, why is my computer doing this? Also, uh, so I also meant to ask you, Grim Grizz, about what your, uh, gaming experience is. Uh, the reason I ask is because, like a couple years ago, I used to be like incredibly into the board gaming hobby, where I would just play like the most like, niche, complicated like economic board games out there and that was my hobby for a good period of time and then i kind of gave it up and um, um well i was forged in this game called Jumpgate. that sounds familiar by a company called net devil and like the original devs tried tried to do an expansion called episode two and it, it basically destroyed the community that it built up in the beta 
and they gave the the programming gig to one dude named Istvan. And I, I spent 10 years trying to keep that game alive. It still exists, to my knowledge, on a server in Russia. Uh, I, I played it right with, when COVID hit. I retreated into the gaming world and flew my spaceship again for a while. Let's see. Best game of all time. And then I did some WoW and City of Villains and... Okay. Uh, a lot of StarCraft. Some that sort of thing. Mostly okay. Blizzard stuff. Gotcha. Okay, I see something here called Jumpgate Charade. Although I don't... It was the is Reconstruction it. Initiative. Was the subtext. Uh, yes! Oh, wait, hold on, I see it here. Yep, okay. Role-playing, uh, space flight and combat. Okay. Yeah, I found the Wikipedia page. Uh, it, it was basically uh, the storyline was some accountants got together and decided to make a video game and made that company. And so it. it was like an underdog video game developer story. And I got in on the beta. And so that's when I learned that if you get in on early on stuff, you can help steer it. Help steer it. Mm -hmm. So... Man, mathematicians and accountants, they make like, they they just make the best board games. They just, they know how to do it. Um, what is it? Richard Garfield, uh, the creator of Magic, he was a, he was a mathematician. And funny story PhD. about him. Yeah, funny story about him. Magic the Gathering, the reason that he created that game was because he wanted to use that game to fund another game that he made called Robo Rally, right? So he did that, right? And then unexpectedly, like, Magic just took off from it's there. It's because they called it The Gathering. That, that's genius. It could be. I... You know, I designed uh, five Magic cards. Ooh. No. No, I didn't. I think that everybody that's in the corner needs a Magic card so that you have experience. Wait, like, you, you did the art for, like, five Magic cards? No, when I sued Hasbro, one of the, um, one of the, uh, when we settled out of court, one of the things was that they would commission Therese Nielsen to do a panorama of, uh, a panorama that would be cut into five, one of each uh, type of land, and that those cards would be judge foils that would get sent out to everybody. Oh, wow. Holy cow. Has you sued Hasbro, huh? I did. Show yeah, me on the doll where the toy company touched you. <laughs> How did they hurt you, Jacob? They <coughs> pretended that we were volunteers and they treated us like employees and paid us Less than minimum wage. Ah, Ooh. excellent. Excellent. That's right. Hasbro owns, uh, well, they own Wizards, Wizards of, the of the Coast. Yep, and they own yes. Magic the Gathering. Yes. Own. own yeah, I was I was actually on um, the qu <laughs> the quartering, you know, uh, that, that channel, talking about my uh, thing before he was big. Oh, okay. Ooh, so yes. this is YouTube history that I could potentially find. I yeah. couldn't find it. If you can find it. He did, he, Jacob was on it. He killed it. It's actually, <laughs> like, keeping track of, like, people's appearances is something that uh, people that want to participate from behind the screen could help with. Because I'm sure, like, it's, it's hard for everybody else to make sure they have an updated playlist of all the things they've been in. I know it is for me. Man, I tell you, I don't know what it is, but Jacob, whenever I am in your comment section, like, my inner troll just pops out every now and then. Like, on the stream you just did, I'm just like, let's watch the Martin Luther movie from 1953 and see if the Lutheran church will copyright strike it. So these, these oh, are the cards. Wow. Yeah. Oh, these, oh, wow. These are beautiful. At first I thought these were the Zendikar, but it doesn't. 
No. She so the reason I asked specifically for her is because she's really good at the foiling process and they look much better as foils like w- when you have actual um printouts like the actual cards it looks much better than just the the artwork there. Wow. So you're responsible for all sorts of mana. I am responsible for all sorts of mana, yes. Even the black that explains. Man. See, there that are people. A lot, man. There are people who still blame me for the death of the judge program in uh, in Magic. Death of the judge program. Yeah. So the so Magic judges were the tournament officials. Yep. And right. ultimately, they ended up part. Well, I it was partially my fault, but like so there still is a judge program, but it's not like it was back before I sued them and helped other people sue them. Hmm. Okay. Huh. Cause it's like I know that I mean, I have played in like uh sealed and draft events before where it's like each store will have like their own like magic judge, right? So right. like the people playing have a question, they can go and and, like, you know, ask, hey, is this, like, legal and whatnot? So, yeah. yeah. but those um, people apparently used to be treated like employees and paid underpaid, and now they're... So, possibly the biggest... My biggest moment of fame was during Pro Tour Philadelphia, during the top eight, somebody asked a rules question from me, and I showed up on camera answering it. Estrati leads by one to zero. See a dismember get drawn by Hampton. Twenty. So it sounds like we're going to try to uh, check in on the Josh Otter late match after this uh, game here, but. Uh, these guys seem to have hung- and my my phone started blowing up with my friends. I just saw you on camera. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Interesting. Wait. So so you must have played like you must have played like pro magic then. I'm guessing. No, I I was never good enough. I I never got any pro points. I I, I but I was I was a I was a judge. Yeah, I was a level two judge. Okay. I, I got the IRS involved. Yes, I did. <laughs> well, my man is tapped out. I'm glad you guys are, are you're not sitting in silence anymore, Jacob. Garth, it was a pleasure to meet you. I'll yeah, likewise, around. Chris. Thank you. Thank I, you very much. I'm going to play D&D with Father Stephen at the Lord of Spirits uh, convention. I look, I, I want, when is it? It's um it's the weekend before Halloween in Pennsylvania. You should I'm come. Not, I'm not ruling that out. That's far enough out. I don't have to rule it out. So maybe it sounds like fun. See you guys. You actually go all the. It was, all, uh, oh, it was only five hundred dollars for an individual room. So.